guys, welcome back to our channel. I'm Ebony and I'm Erica and we still get asked about porosity. There's a lot of emphasis put on porosity and rightfully so. Yeah, you need to have a basic understanding of it for your hair to grow. Outside of eating right and scalp care, knowing how your hair responds to products and even how to use the products on your hair has a lot to do with porosity. And if you don't know, porosity is your hair's ability to absorb moisture through the pores in the cuticle. Now that's the condensed version, but your hair breaks off without moisture, and if it breaks off, that means it's not growing. So regarding porosity, you can't skip over it, you can't gloss over it, you need to know a little bit about it. I say basic understanding because, y'all, it is confusing trying to figure out what porosity is, like the whole complexities of it. At one point, I was even under the impression that porosity didn't even matter. On one hand, that is true, which you'll see why later in the video, why we say that. And on the other hand, you'll do better if you know better when it comes to something like this. Now we've done a porosity video before, and let's just say now I kind of know a little bit more about porosity than I did when we did that last video because what we said in that last video was wrong and you're going to see what it is in just a second. Now we found Glam Fam Hair and Beauty on YouTube and let me just tell you he is legit when it comes to explaining hair porosity. He's a licensed cosmetologist and he has several videos on porosity and it's, the, some of those videos is like, oh yeah, that does yeah. make sense. <laughs> and there's one particular video that just did it for me. I'll have it linked below so y'all can go see it after this one, but it's super informative and it's what we'll be referencing throughout the rest of this video. That video is pretty long, but here are some key takeaways that helped us understand it better. Number one, the water test method really doesn't work. If you guys remember in our last porosity video, we did do a test with water where the hair had to float in order to determine its porosity. Alright, now that we touched bases on the levels of porosity, Ebony and I are going to test our hair porosity using the two tests that we talked about. We're doing the float test, and just a little bit about the float test. Um, you have to take two or three strands of hair, clean hair preferably. I've got my water, you fill it up with room temperature water, fill up a clear bowl. Here is my hair. And it's a common test that everybody does. I've seen it all over YouTube. Mm -hmm. But after watching that video from GlamFam, he explains that doing that test is probably not giving you an accurate conclusion on your hair's porosity. In the video, he explains that the water flotation test doesn't really work because it can all fluctuate. For example, when you do the test with the water warm, cold, hot, all that comes into play when you're trying to establish the porosity and the results just won't be the same. And also our hair might have had product on it so it wasn't freshly washed. But that could also affect porosity. If I used a clean strand of hair, that can like kind of affect the results of the porosity test than if I used a dirty strand of hair that had a lot of buildup on it. The porosity result was just unreliable that way, so forget that type of test. We were wrong. As he was explaining this, he did say one strand of hair can have different porosity levels, even on different parts of your head. Yeah, so you can have high porosity here and then like a lower porosity like up here somewhere or maybe over here, over here, just different types of porosities. For example, we have relaxed hair, like my ends can be a different porosity level and then my new growth, because we stretch, can be a totally different porosity level. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot can come to play with this. Chemicals from relaxers or coloring can really affect your hair's porosity. I think it usually makes it higher. Fresh new growth or hair that hasn't really experienced life yet usually has a lower level of porosity because nothing has been done to affect it yet. And things like combing, flat ironing, usual manipulation affects porosity with hair that's been here for a while. And also from what I understand from that video, um, there aren't just three set levels of porosity like low, normal, and high. There's levels within each one so you could be a higher level within the low porosity spectrum or a higher level within the normal porosity spectrum. So yeah you have your three main levels of porosity and then you have sub levels mm -hmm. within each one. And I hope that makes sense and that we explained it right. <laughs> I hope we're making all kinds of sense. But yeah whatever level you're on or sub level you're on you're gonna need protein. That's a misconception with hair that identifies with lower porosities that you don't need protein or your hair just I don't know, doesn't respond well to protein your hair needs protein like that's what your hair is made of it's made up it's made up of protein so it's just not gonna do you any good to just skip it no matter what porosity level you're on yeah, just adjust how often you use it and if you do use it use lower levels of proteins or just use products that reinforce or reconstruct comment below what your protein treatment is um, I know we're Afgy girls among many others uh, we'll actually have those linked below in the description box if you want to check out like protein options but my main takeaway with this video is this like I don't have to do a complete overhaul of my products that I use on my hair and you don't have to either. Some products do favor hair in certain porosity levels but you can't adjust how you use them and he does explain in the video specific ways to do that. One is heat and the cuticle of your hair actually responds to heat by opening up. Yeah, depending on where your porosity level is with your hair you can use indirect heat like uh, hooded dryers or steamers or he said you can also use your body heat I mean, like when you put a 
shower cap over your head or whatever they're body heat from your scalp. So I don't know, which one are you guys? Are you guys more of the indirect heat? Because I gotta have my hooded dryers and steamers. Or do you guys use body heat as well to kind of generate and open up the cuticle in your hair? He also mentions that adding water to these products can help get moisture through the cuticle. Obviously there's more to it than that when it comes to knowing porosity, but these are just like our takeaways that we took from that particular video that can really help us. Honest, it's kind of hard answering questions regarding porosity because I don't know, A, it's just your porosity can be all over the place, and B, it's just like your own personal unique code for how your hair responds to products, or maybe like what you're doing to your hair, what is it that you're doing, or just a lot of different factors come into play when it comes to your hair's porosity. For example, my hair loves uh, indirect heat like steaming, like we mentioned. Um, it also loves grease. You know, we, love, we use grease yeah. all the time. <laughs> it's not really like set in stone like, oh, I'm not going to use this product because of a textbook definition of porosity. Which is why, as we mentioned earlier, that porosity doesn't matter and stuff. In that sense it doesn't because it's, you really just have to use products that your hair responds well to. Whether or not it goes by the definition of what porosity is or what level you're on, right. you know. Know your hair. If it responds well to it, keep the products. Mm -hmm. And then, like we mentioned earlier, then adjust the way you use those products, you know, like heat or maybe add water, have protein. water. Protein, yeah, with protein. You, you can use protein, you don't have to cut protein out. You need protein, maybe different levels of protein and then you can use up your moisture with it and stuff. Mm -hmm. So you just don't need to cut something out just because you think that it should go with your certain protein. Textbook definitely. Right, <laughs> it's like we said, yeah. So don't be just, so rigid with your routine. Right, you know, just know your hair and stuff and everything. Your hair is going to respond to you, so you respond back to it. Yeah, so comment below what your routine is and what your porosity is like. Also, go check out Glam Fam Hair and Beauty yes. YouTube channel just to get a better understanding of what we're all talking about. Right, his video is definitely more informative. We just like kind of had our little breakdowns and stuff of what we thought would be uh, helpful. But yeah, that video is really, really good. We'll have a link below in the description. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you guys on, oh, on Wednesday we have a vlog because look at our hair. <laughs> Well, yeah. well, her hair. Well, my hair. Mine, this hair bang situation is coming in Wednesday's vlog, and then her situation is coming next Sunday. So yes. you guys have some videos to look forward to. <laughs> Make sure you subscribe so you won't miss out. Hit that notification bell. Um, and yeah, thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys on Wednesday for a vlog. Bye! Bye.